Hey platform and welcome to a special Valentine's Day episode of Rowan recommends you all of the books. So basically what we're going to be doing today is I'll be recommending some books for various different types of people this Valentine's Day. Um, we're going to obviously have a lot of romance. Some of it might end tragically, some of it might end happily. Hopefully there will be something on this list to suit you. There's still a couple of days until Valentine's Day so this will allow you enough time to nip down to your local bookshop, um, have a little scroll through your Kindle and get the book that you like best from this list or maybe more than one. So my first recommendation is for people who like beautiful books, right? Stunning books, illustrated books, just books that are physically beautiful to hold. Um, and it is 100 Nights of Hero. This book is absolutely stunning. It has these beautiful like illustrations and just the like lyricism and like world within it is incredible. This story is very much in a tradition of mythology which pops up around the world in various places of like the woman who has an unwanted suitor who manages to keep him at bay by either like tricking him or distracting him. Essentially our story hinges around a woman who is in love with her maid and so in order to kind of trick and keep uh, this suitor who is trying to seduce her at bay she decides to tell him stories every night for a hundred nights in order to distract him from this task. And so not only do we get this central romance of Cherry and Hero, like the woman and her maid, we also get all of these incredible, like intricate mythological folklore stories that are being told as well. If you're someone who prefer a story that will be tagged on AO3, just as angst, um, we're gonna go with the classic Noughts and Crosses. It feels strange to give this as a recommendation because I just feel like everyone must have read it by now, but maybe this is your sign if you haven't read it yet to get on it because it is absolutely iconic by the queen of YA, Mallory Blackman. So in case you don't know the premise of the book, essentially it is kind of like a twist on our own history of like segregation, but reversed. So the idea is that African countries colonized Europe and the rest of the world. And so in this kind of segregated world, we have Sefi who is dark skinned, privileged elite, and her friend Callum who is white. And kind of the, goes into the social differences between them, the implications of that romance, especially in a world where a romance between them is forbidden. So a lot of people read this book as a standalone novel, but it is actually part of a series, um, the last of which came out last year or the year before. So if you enjoy this, then you can definitely get into the rest of the books in the series as well. If you are looking for a romance book that has a disabled protagonist, something that we do not see often enough, um, I cannot recommend The World Between Us more. So we actually read this as one of our book club books. If you don't know about the book club, the link will be in the description. Uh, and so we got to talk to the author on this channel and it was so interesting to hear her thoughts that went into it, the research, like the, the impetus behind it, um, because I know that everyone who was part of the book club really enjoyed this read. So the story focuses on Alice, who is chronically ill. She's often having to spend all her time in bed. She has very little energy, um, but she does have this streaming service where people have volunteered to essentially like stream their lives so that she can like go along for the ride, see things she wouldn't be able to see otherwise um, on people's daily runs or going shopping or at their jobs. Like it's, kind of this handful of people who are showing her this world and one day this new person arrives on the scene this new streamer and she starts to fall for him i'm not saying this should sway you but his name is rowan and as we all know that is um basically a perfect name so and don't worry this is not the kind of book where it's like a romance with someone suddenly makes someone better like it just all they needed was a romance and suddenly they could get over that pesky chronic illness uh, or that pesky mental illness no, it doesn't fall into that trope at all, which I know we all appreciate. Okay, next, if you're looking for a historical romance, um, I'm gonna give you a recommendation, but basically you could essentially read any of this author's work. Um, so let's go with Fountains of Silence. Rita Sapetti is just so good at taking like these very uh, dramatic, sometimes tragic, politically charged, like historical settings, like digging into that world and coming up with these like beautiful sweeping romances within it. The two central characters here are, are totally different in terms of their circumstances. So one of them is like living under this dictatorship and suffering under this dictatorship. And the other is just like a visitor. As with a lot of her books, we're not just looking at this like beautiful romance at the center. You're also digging into 
other issues of like identity and also like the cost of being silent in the face of injustice. If you are wanting a classic like tropey in the best way high school romance, then I'm going to recommend The Hoodie Girl. It is an absolutely classic combo of girl who just wants to keep her head down, like get through school, not make any waves, just be unnoticed. And she gets a babysitting job for the younger sibling of the very popular, very hot boy at school. What happens when the two get closer? And should she continue to stay invisible or step into the spotlight? If you are into things like fake dating, misunderstandings, all of that jazz, I'm actually gonna recommend two books by the same author. David Yoon has written both Frankly In Love and Super Fake Love Song, and both of them are just amazing for that kind of story. So Super Fake Love Song is kind of like a mistaken identity story. So this boy basically starts to, um, tell some lies that spiral out of control after the girl that he really likes mistakes his brother's bedroom for his. Now, normally like that wouldn't really make a difference except for the fact that his brother has all of these like amazing rock band posters on the walls and our protagonist um, maybe lies to her and tells her that he himself is in a band. Yeah, this lie just continues and I'm sure as we all know from that classic, like small lie spirals out of control romance trope, we know that we're gonna get the question, like when is he going to come clean and what is her reaction going to be? And he also wrote Frankly In Love, which is a fake dating story. Essentially, uh, these two friends both wanna date someone else, but their families wouldn't approve. So they fake dating each other to try and gain some kind of freedom. I'm sure as we can all tell, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. If you want to enjoy a book with a heavy dose of nostalgia, I'm gonna recommend Love Frankie because that is a Jacqueline Wilson book. This is also the book that kind of coincided with Jacqueline Wilson coming out publicly. And so we have this very sweet uh, queer girl romance. It tells the story of Frankie whose mum has gotten really sick. And so she's growing up very fast or having to grow up really fast. And she starts to see another side of a girl at school and maybe it's a side that she kind of likes. Does Frankie want this girl Sally to be her friend, her best friend, her girlfriend maybe? And will Sally want the same back? This is an amazing story from, again, an absolute giant, an icon of like British literature, Jacqueline Wilson, which talks about essentially the journey to first love. If you would like a story that is not just about loving someone else, but also learning to love yourself, I cannot recommend Camp enough. So Camp is like a queer coming of age book, which isn't about coming out. So Randy has been out for years. He's been going to this like summer camp for queer kids. And he really, really fancies this other boy who's at the camp, but he knows that he is not this boy's type. So he decides to reinvent himself for the next time he comes to camp to basically maybe have a chance with this boy. So he changes himself completely. He becomes like the more masculine boy that he thinks that this boy wants. Obviously, I think we can tell that changing yourself for someone else is never going to work, but it might take him a little while to figure that out. This book is was such a delight. It's so lovely and sweet and just like cute and wholesome. So. I can highly, highly recommend it. If you wish that Gossip Girl was a little bit more gay, uh, then I'm going to recommend Never Kiss Your Roommate. It is set at an elite boarding school that runs on gossip. And there is an anonymous blog called The Watcher, who is essentially out to expose everyone's secrets. It follows new arrivals, Evelyn and Seth, as they start to get closer to their respective love interests. But the secrets that The Watcher knows might threaten all of that. Also, the front cover of this book is just like, it's super cute. If you're looking for something which is the exact opposite of the angsty kind of books that I recommended at the beginning, then I'm gonna recommend Date Me Bryson Keller, which is just like the sweetest, most gentle, bubblegum, lovely romance that you can imagine. It focuses around a bet. I love a good high school romance that focuses around a bet of some kind. Essentially, this boy is bet by his friends that he will not be able to go on like dates with all of these girls in school and not like at least want one of them to be his girlfriend. He's convinced that like, he doesn't need dating. He doesn't need a girlfriend. He's just gonna get through school without romance. And they're like, there's gonna be someone. There's gonna be someone that you're willing to like stop this policy for. So things get a little bit complicated when the protagonist of our story, who is in fact a boy, sort of spur of the moment, asks him out. Uh, and he says, yes. Now this as a story premise, had the potential to be like super sad or super angsty or super like traumatic. Not at all. This is so sweet, so lovely. Just the romance between these two 
is, oh, it's just, I cannot recommend this enough for someone who's wanting, you know, all the fluff in the world. If you're looking for fantasy romance, I'm gonna recommend another one of our book club picks that was The Skin of the Sea. So this is essentially like an epic adventure and romance rolled into one inspired by West African mythology. It is what is being described on TikTok as the Black Mermaid book for obvious reasons. Our central character Simi saves a boy's life while at sea and, um, you know, you think that was kind of a nice thing to do, except for the fact that it goes against some like real intense, like supreme creator ancient decree. Uh, and she's gonna have to go on a whole quest to try and undo what she messed up by that one decision. Like the sticks are high in this book and the world building is exquisite. And we actually have a couple of videos with the author Natasha Bowen on this very channel. So if you read it and like it, you can then watch those to hear a little bit more about her process of creating this world. And finally, I'm gonna give a couple of recommendations for people who want a bit of variety. Maybe they're not sure what they really want from, from one of these books. Uh, the first one is Let It Snow, and the second is Love Hurts. So Let It Snow, you may have actually seen the adaptation of it on Netflix. Essentially, it tells like the intertwined stories of a bunch of different people, um, one, you know, snowy day. Make, make sense with the title, doesn't it? And so this is great if you're not sure what kind of romance you want because there's like loads of different types of romance and tropes and relationships going on all throughout that book. Uh, and the second one is Love Hurt. So this is an anthology that was actually collated together like by Mallory Blackman, but has a ton of different authors in it who were all asked to essentially talk about love and romance in some way in like a short form story. So I hope there was something on that list for you. Please let us know in the comments which one you are gonna try out or if you have any recommendations that you wanna give other people who are watching the video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Platform for more bookish videos like this one.